do, Margaret? Hello, Anne. From Canada. <gasps> I've got a Canadian aunt. And um, it's my father's twin brother's widow. And... Uh, and she's really with it. She actually you know, retired relatively recently from being a clinical epidemiologist. And she's a bit of an expert on most things, actually. And uh, quite often tells me how it really is over there. Um, and I know that she'll never hear me do that takeoff because uh, she said, oh, if only I could access your painting tutorials. I said, well, you literally just go to my Facebook page and it's like, uh, I think she believes that by joining Facebook, uh, your soul will be stolen by the devil. So, which maybe it is. Uh, so anyway, she won't see that will take off. Anyway, she lives in Niagara on the lake. That's how she talks uh, in uh, Canada. So, um, yeah. Hello, Sarah. Sarah, did you tell Rachel? Uh, she hasn't rung back. We'll try ringing her again anyway. Hello, Judith. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Emma Kasky, Evelyn, Mel. No golf today. Yes, lol indeed. Um, oh, 14 of you. What fun it is. Oh, God, I've got no watch on today. Hello, Jane Reed. Um, yeah, my watch is doing this thing where it's like uh, my super dry watch, which is the same as the one I gave my mum, uh, for those of you who watched the video, which is only up for a short period of time, because if she ever saw that I'd done that, she would disown me. Um, yeah, so my lovely super dry watch has uh, begun behaving erratically. And one example of the erratic behavior of this watch, ah, oh, thank you very much, Sarah, uh, was I had my grandchildren here a few weeks bef ago before we got like super scared of COVID. And, um, and it was a beautiful day. So we did like Olympics on the lawn and we did the high jump, the long jump, the welly chuck, the limbo. And then I got, got uh, and then we did a course so they would run away and I could time them and uh, poor little Orla uh, set away. Morning Barbara Roberts. Yeah, so I would wait until the, the, big, the little hand got to, you know, the second hand got to 12 and then I would go like ready, steady, go. And so um, her and Rowan were sort of neck and neck because he may be small and young, but he's a little sh runner alonger. So I'd said, right, Orla, this, you've got to really try this time. Like, put your heart and soul into it. Right. And so she's deadly serious, seven years old. And um, I went, right, you're ready. You're focused. Yeah. So I went, OK, on your marks, get set, go. As the second hand reached 12. So off she went. She ran her little heart out. Um, round she went, you know, way round the lawn, down to the path, up the course, came back. She literally ran her heart out. Um, but the second hand reached 12 and then just stopped, which is quite unusual, literally at 12 o'clock. So that was one thing. And then yesterday, I honestly, I think it was going backwards. Here's Jane. Sneaking in like a mouse. She's been to the post office. How did you find things in the post office? There was a queue. <gasps> did it? What? No. Yeah, she stood outside the post office chatting. Oh, uh, I've got to forward you an email that Mel Rennick sent me. It's called the Westwood Woodburn Two Step. It's bloody funny. Or you can just see it on my email. Um, hello, John Armstrong. John Armstrong watches. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> I don't think she does, John. Sorry. <laughs> Is 5 you okay after the hospital visit? Hello, Emma, by the way, and Valerie uh, and Sue Bell. Um, yeah, he's just the same, but they sort of 
sending over more tests and stuff and it's sort of brought home the fact that he is quite high risk and and he may have to go move into the caravan although I did say to him you could live in the kitchen and it would be just like upstairs downstairs and I'll be Lady um, I'm trying to think in Downton Abbey or upstairs down uh, basically I will be the Duchess and he will be um, call the what do they call the butler he'll be the butler uh, and the cook because he'll be in the kitchen anyway I haven't decided he's fine right oh I've got another painting store so I'll just move that aside Here's today's painting. Now then, if the sound goes a bit dalek there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, we've done everything we can, pay for the broadband, turn the router off in the kitchen, so you can let me know and then I'll just do painting and I'll remain silent. So I'm sorry about that. And Bellamy, Bellamy, I don't think so, maybe? And the gardener. <gasps> Annaline! You naughty, naughty thing. Right, for those of you who um, are unaware, I have a penchant for like pins and badges and brooches, and a, a suspicious looking parcel came through the post yesterday. Thanks for the update, I will, thank you. Uh, yeah, a suspicious looking up. Um, Parcel came through the post and I was so excited. I'm going to cut it open and look what I've got. A gorgeous cockerel badge, but even more gorgeous. Anne from America, America sent me this beautiful, beautiful card with a beautiful, really lovely, thoughtful, kind message. Thank you so much. I'll treasure it. No, I'm really joking. No, I will treasure them. Thank you. That's really kind. <sighs> so, Sam Leach, wasn't it Lady Bellamy? I can't remember. Anyway, basically, I'm the toff and he's the, he's the butler. So, glasses. so kind on a line thank you right so um so this is where we are with the light sussexes i'll quickly talk you through it now because once i tip the, the ipad up it might the sound might go so we started the background we've got the bodies of the cockles uh sorry the light sussex could still do with a bit more depth in the lower areas uh and i've got these lovely black feathers to add i've got the eyes the beaks the background detail on the legs so it's really just going through it and keeping being entertained all the time not necessarily doing methodically going through it but maybe doing bits and then other bits Bellamy you're right well done um, so I'll try and do a gentle tip once I've got everything ready and try not to make a sound or do anything that might oh I think I might do the little the blacks of the eyes so I'll find myself a nice pro arty pointy brush with jewels as tape on I just it not that it really matters oh but it does <coughs> right Emily Edgar hello Right. It's like being on the fairground, isn't it? There we are. Right, so to do the eyes, I'm going to turn it upside down anyway, and I'll work from left to right. And I'm just going to do the blacks of the eyes, and you might remember that um, the black of the eye is really just, it's just a circle. And then you just need um, to sort of hint at maybe a bit of light reflection 
like that. Even just one little white dot makes the eye look like an eye and not like a really awkwardly painted thing. <gasps> Hello Sheila, how are you? I was wearing the um I was wearing the lovely um was it the Charolais? Not yesterday. But the day before, which I treasure. There's a little hair sticking out of here. God, we had a near thing day before yesterday when I, I walked the dogs up the hill, round up to the what we call the Beacon Road, right at the top. It's about a sort of, I don't know, two, three mile walk. And then back down and I noticed that the they'd put some cows and calves in the field that I was due to come through. Jane, I think that those cat the other day, are you can you hear me? Yeah. There's they've got some black cows and calves. And they look quite peaceful, but blooming heck, they came for me. Where? That field, just behind the house there. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's quite a big field. It's massive, in fact. And, um, and it slopes. So I was coming down the hill, and I saw the cows and calves. And as I was coming down the hill, I noticed that they'd been spooked by something. Was It a, It was a charolais, yeah. Um... Yeah, I noticed they'd been spooked and I didn't know what by and I saw all the rooks come out of the rookery as well and I wondered whether maybe a fox had gone through or something. Anyway, I thought with them being at the bottom of the hill and me being at the top of the hill with two very, very, very small dogs that they might just not, you know, they might, they might notice me but not bother doing anything because generally speaking around here, they'll come down the hill to scare the wits out of you but they don't bother galloping up a hill. Not on this occasion, because I noticed one of the cows come, and it was a long way away, start coming towards me, and then they all started coming towards me. So I took, I, I sort of took a different track to go like up higher, so I'd be next to the fence, that, which I would go along, and then there'd be a chance of getting through a gate and coming back down a different way. And then, and, and they kept on coming towards me, and so I tried to run, which isn't easy when you've had a broken ankle, but um, a few years ago. And then I noticed Fifey had come through the gate at the bottom in a high-vis coat. And they started galloping towards him, didn't they? Honestly, Jane, I thought he was going to meet... I shouted. It was a long way away. And do you know why he did it? Because he saw me and he saw the cows coming towards me, so he did it as a diversionary tactic. And they were cows and calves? Yeah, cows with calves, yeah. You can... Um, they, they go between these two fields, Jane. Yeah. I'm going to have to have words with them. Not the cows and calves the owners. Emma Scott, who's watching, you might just mention that to Jimmy. Just tell him that we could nearly, I won't say the word in front of these polite people, but we got quite a fright. And they definitely were too far away to see the dogs as well, but they were, whew, they were feisty. I don't mind the heifers and the bullocks because they're just You know, if you turn around and just say boo to them, they run away. See, they're not, those eyes are not too bad. They, that's a start anyway. Do you find that, Jane? They're just curious. Yeah. Like heifers and bullocks, they always turn tail when you sort of make the slightest sort of movement. Even follow us on horses. Yeah. They follow us as well. Um, I mean, obviously, I've got to be aware because Mark, with his diabetes, is quite, he's quite blind now. So I've got to keep a, like, a really close eye on him. <laughs> close eye. Okay. 
I'm just trying to find an even pointier brush. What's being said? Never a good idea to walk through coos and cars with a dog. I know, I know. I wasn't walking through them, Sheila, I promise. And I am I, super careful. Uh, I was a long way away and there was always room for me to get to the fence and through it and then to the gate and through it or chuck the dogs over the wall, which I always make sure I've got an exit strategy. Sheila, did somebody, or Jane, do you know, didn't somebody get killed on the, on the Roman wall? Yeah. Oh dear, was it a visitor? I don't know. But there was somebody killed in Yorkshire as well. Yeah, I saw that. So that's like cautionary tales for cows and calves that are just not safe to be around with dogs. Well, at all, because they're very protective over their calves, which is good. So I'm just doing the detail around the eyes. Yeah, so it's rather looking as though Fifey and I might be leading somewhat separate lives quite soon. Certainly, sort of physically. Luckily, we can text each other. If he wants to go and live in the caravan in order to avoid dying of COVID. I was just speaking to my sister who's next door neighbour along a long um a long man who's a consultant at Cramlington. Uh, and they're very friendly and because I was saying to her, it's like I just don't know what the risk is. I don't know how high his risk is. And um another consultant friend of mine said, Oh, it sounds like long COVID what he's what he's suffering from. And really nobody knows. But I just feel I'd like somebody to say to me, yes, you absolutely must protect him or you never see people of this age with these symptoms you know, dying on the wards. It's like nobody seems to know. Great. Jeff Ross years ago lost his leg. Oh dear. Is your TV smarter? Oh, my TV. This is a little bit embarrassing, actually. Somebody's just inquired about the telly because I've been complaining about it ever since I got it back in... Um... God, ages ago. Uh, March? I thought it would be a good idea to get a smart telly. It was the worst decision I ever made. Anyway, it turns out the reason why it wasn't working is because the, the thing at the back of the human box where the aerial goes in had come a bit loose. So I have to say I felt a bit of a stupid idiot when the man came in and just went like that and, and he said it's the same as the last time. And I said, well, that seems to be like a little bit of a defect, you don't mind me saying, because surely it should be properly squeezed in. He said, do you move it? And it was like, well, yes, we turn it around so we can watch the when we're eating our supper sometimes. But you know, it's not as if I sort of go uh, 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 to it. Um, anyway, I was quite keen for him to get in and out quite quickly. Due to the COVID risk. And um, it's been working fine since then. Obviously. I presume you can still hear me. We've had three people trampled to death over the past few years and I always climb over the fence. Yeah.
I'd certainly let Dorothy go if there was a sort of cow calf situation anywhere near me. Uh, and she'd probably, you know, she'd probably be able to run away, but not more. I'd just have to sort of. He's only this big. You probably can't see. He's like from here to here. He's like um, he's like one of the big French sticks, but he weighs a lot more. And when he's afraid, he just sort of crouches, which isn't going to get you anywhere when you're being trampled by a cow. Not as a strategy. Okay. So the eyes are looking a bit more like eyes. I'll turn them around so you can see a bit closer. Not very complicated, but fairly effective. Okay. keep doing this but I want to add again to the areas of depth on these chickens so I'm going to get my um, what is it three eighths pro art brush if I can find it here oh no there was one with a sticker on wasn't there this is the one that I stole from the stock day before yesterday so I'll use this one and I'll Oh, we don't want that colour. That could be a good start in there. So I'll add some. Oh, wrong one. Which one was I fiddling with? Oh, yeah, there. Grey, spelt with a Y, a little bit of, could be alizarin and crimson, just to warm it up a bit, maybe a bit more green actually, so that it reflects the colours around it, so it's always a good idea if, if in doubt, and you're doing shadows or something white, to just look at what colours are likely to be, or are, around it and reflect a bit more green, I would say. A little bit more Payne's Grey, because it's going to lighten up, remember? Right, let's see what that. Is. How's your GG? Pity you can't compete at Alex Ford this weekend. Yeah, my GG. Actually, I did have. I, I was. Um, I had to withdraw a couple of entries this weekend. I was doing. This is uh, you know, Bernie, uh, who's very, very horsey and takes an interest. I was entered for an affiliated one day event at, in Cumbria, Dulston Green, which I had to withdraw from. And I was also doing. Massage at High Plains, and I had to withdraw from that. But this morning he tried to knock me over in the stable, so I think he must be feeling a little bit better. I had him in overnight because it was really quite wet last night. I want some more blue in this. So, guys, yeah, he seems quite a bit better. I'll probably uh, stick it back on tomorrow and hang out and see how he feels. And hope it 
doesn't, don't we? How are you all finding, the, those of you who live in the northeast, how are you finding the new restrictions? Is it making much difference? Or? or not? Are you, Mel, are you um, writing at Anik Fall at the weekend? Mel does this thing where uh, she assists the dressage judge by uh, writing what they say as the competitors come in front of them, uh, which is amazing. Um, it would be voluntary as well, I expect. You might get a burger in return for all of your hard work. And they hardly get a rest. I don't expect them to just I don't know, sit in the car all day long and pee in their pants. Don't do that, Mel. A friend of mine, uh, well, quite a lot of friends are. I think Lyndon's at Annick Ford this weekend, Jane. He's your mother in law. All right. Jane's mother-in-law is a dressage judge, so she's judging. You might be writing for her, Mel. To be it. I feel really bad. I didn't decide till today that I was going to do a live video. And of course, poor Beth Mornings, winter. Only, oh Lord, here. Yeah. Um, poor Beth needs a warning because otherwise it's going to be 4 a.m. or something. And I do not see her name appearing on the comments. I feel really guilty, which is a shame. Hopefully, she's just too busy having fun. Susan Davis, only old dears going mad by my loo rolls again. <laughs> Well, I don't know who's going to do the next load of shopping. I haven't been in a shop since about February. Well, actually, apart from co-op once or twice in the village shop. Because Fifey does it all, but he might be going to put his foot down. Which is when I'll learn how to do... Sh what? You want to... Yeah. Yeah, well, it might be time for me to learn how to do it online. <laughs> Thing is, I think everybody else might be having the same idea, don't you? Do that. Where do you get yours from? Which is the best? So, do you look to see if you can get a slot before you order? I'm not exactly at the front of the queue because I have no loyalty. Okay, so there I've added turn the other way up. It might seem quite dark, but then there's still a lot of work to do in the background down here, and it will darken up. Um, but you see what I mean about just adding a bit of depth to the shadows of the lower part. Now, I think I might now um, do the uh, black bits. They are the bits. Just put that there. Put my paint's grey. Here. Don't 
Donna, hello. Difficult to make sense of the night I live on your own. Yeah. And last one, I've seen half my life. Jane's name is Susan Pierre Mel. Um, sorry? Mother in law, lovely mum. Um, and you're sure to know her. Still from home. Nothing has changed. Annie Palmer. Hello, Annie Palmer. What a charmer. All right. I'm sure you can see before I come up. Jane's working on the database, that's why it's going bloom every so often. That is exactly the problem with me. Have I missed that? I've forgotten what I said. What is exactly the problem with me? Do you want to get up at four? Like Beth? It's lovely doing this. Jesus. Well, it's good that nobody's come. There is somebody due to come visit the gallery today, but they didn't give a specific time, so. Oh. There's a car in the car park. What colour's your car? What? Oh, that's it then. <laughs> Why are you driving a grey car? Your car's maroon. It looks... The one I'm looking at looks silver. Oh, all oh right. Right, right, folks. Turns out there's there's somebody here. So as soon as they approach, I'm going to say goodbye. Approaching, so I'm going to say goodbye. I'll just tip you up. What did you say? Oh God, I've got to get a mask on. Everything. Anyway, it's been absolutely lovely spending time with you again. I know I'm excited for the tail feathers as well. Won't be tomorrow though because um, oh it could be tomorrow. Anyway, I'm gonna go now because they're coming to the door.